Another great evening here at Sideline Sports, joined by Jake and John, and special guest, former Denver Bronco, probably one of the best defensive players I've ever got to see, Carl Mecklenburg. Carl, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to start with the question that, you know, everybody always asks me to ask, and I always forget. So looking at the players today compared to when you play, you know, do you think you'd be able to play today? And what do you think the biggest difference is between the players today and when you play? Yeah, um, I would have a hard time making the team today uh, just because I was uh, I was a 310th pick of the draft. I was not somebody that was expected to make it. I made it because I, I could hit. I mean, I was, I was a, I was a football player. I didn't, I didn't look good in shorts. <laughs> That's just practice in shorts now. So how do you make the team if you're not expected to make it and, and you're not playing football? So, uh, so that would have been a challenge. I think I, I would have had a, a lot of fun pass rushing against today's tackles. Uh, there's, there's a little bit. Of, there's, there, yeah. There, there's a lot of sloppy technique out there. And I think a big part of that is they don't practice full speed and they, they don't, uh, they, they don't really get a chance to, to work, uh, work on their skill set the, the way they need to. And, and coming out of college, uh, same thing. They, they, they have uh, limited practice time um, and, and limited reps and, and end up, I don't think as good uh, as, as the players were back in my day. Oh, all right. Well, you, you mentioned you could hit, and I'm assuming that's where this came from, but I have to ask because one of the first things that happens when you even look you up is your nickname is the Albino Rhino. I have to ask, <laughs> how did that come about? Was it because of how like hard you hit, or was there, there, was there a deeper story to this? Uh, it's, it was a, a teammate back in college, uh, Kirk Bankston, um, Named me that, and it stuck with me. I, it followed me to follow me to Denver. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was undersized um, a, as a defensive lineman, but I could I I was strong enough to throw people around and 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 uh, take care of that. And I, I guess uh, I guess that's where the name came from. All right, and he never told you why. He just one day said, "This is your nickname," and that was the end of it. Is that, <laughs> well, is that what is that yeah, what happened? Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I've got uh, the Swedish and Norwegian and and, and German background, uh, and and not a whole lot of guys uh, with my uh, my my skin tone in the NFL. So I guess that was part of it. Too. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, and then I wanted to also ask you because I was thinking about this before. Uh, and it, you, you kind of made a good transition for me. You talk about guys that hit hard. You played with probably one of the hardest hitting players in all of football for many years, uh, Steve Atwater. You guys were teammates for quite a few years. Yeah. Tell me about what that was like being on that same team. You know, it, just not only how was he as a person, but, you know, obviously very intense, right? And, and you were just saying, look, you were, one, you were not one to shy away from, from the big hits. What was that like being with him? Yeah, I, I I remember holding up uh, running backs, uh, trying to tackle them, and, and they're fighting for an extra yard, and I'm yelling at them, get down, get down, here they come, because <laughs> Dennis Smith and Steve Atwater were coming <laughs> screaming up behind, and I knew if he didn't get down, I was going to get hit, he was going to get hit, and it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, Atwater was a great player, um, uh, a, a, a wonderful human being. He's a, he's a friend of mine to this day. We see each other quite a bit, doesn't live very far away. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, uh, an awesome football player. Absolutely. So I, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Maybe it's not so tough for you, but um, this is something that I just felt, and I've talked to, I actually talked to Mercury Morris and some other people about this. Um, what do you think of today's Pro Football Hall of Fame? Like how, how players are getting in that maybe shouldn't quite get in, but somebody like you – is not in the Hall of Fame. And I've looked at, I was looking at your stats. Um, Richard Seymour, for example, you have over 700 more tackles than him. You have about 22 more sacks than him. Your stats all across the board are significantly better. He averaged five, about f- less than five sacks a year with the Patriots, less than four, less than five sacks a year with the Raiders. But yet he got in the Hall of Fame, at least for my money, mainly because he was on the Tom Brady dynasty teams. Like, what do you think of the Pro Football Hall of Fame? And do you think you'll ever get in the Hall of Fame? Because your stats are significantly better than somebody like that. But yet, for some reason, you're not in. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. 
I know it's I a loaded those, question. I don't but... make those decisions, and right. I and I and I and I and I understand that uh, a lot of the decision. I mean, the the voting is done by um, by media members, or I'm in the senior group now, so I, I don't know. It's some. It's it's a different group, but uh, it's it's my my. I think my biggest issue is that. I played all seven defensive front positions. I, I, I moved around all the time. Uh, so if you look at me as a, just a pass rusher, I had 79 and a half sacks in the regular season. really good. Um, yeah, I mean, that's – but but I don't know that that's Hall of Fame. But then if you put on top of it that half those plays I was playing inside linebacker and I wasn't rushing the pass or I was in coverage, I, you know, so I had I had tackles, but I didn't have as many tackles as a lot of inside linebackers because I was pass rushing a bunch of the time. So, yeah, I would so say 1,100 – 1100 tackles and 79 sacks is pretty good. You know what I mean? Like for, I I mean, that's linebacker and defensive end type of stats, like combined that to me, that's hall of fame stats. It's a great linebacker career. No hell of a defensive end career mixed in one. I mean, that's just me. Well, and and, and honestly, in my mind, what the hall of fame should be is, is what, what did you do uh, to help your team win? What, 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 level was your team when you were at your best and i we went to the super bowl in 86 87 and 89 uh, i missed seven games in 88 those are the only games i missed in my career uh we were eight and eight uh the the point differential between when i played and when i didn't play was nine points we, we, we gave up nine That's, more points. that speaks but, volumes i, I mean it, it, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I must have made a difference yeah i mean I, real quick i just you know, and this is a totally different sport, but it's it's something I don't think we calculate in football, and we should because, you know, you bring it up, and I think it's a good point. Um, you know, baseball is a great example. They they have war, wins above replacement, right? I would love to see, and, and you use yourself as an example, and obviously you make a difference. I think for the Hall of Fame, and I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this, and you know, you guys jump in as well. You know, should football have some kind of a, a, a war system where we say, if this guy wasn't there, how would the team perform without him? Because I think that should be personally a way to measure how valuable a player is to judge hall of fame status. Because if you add a lot of value to the team, to me, that says, yeah, he's worthy of the hall of fame. If you don't, and you're right. If you have the stats, no, right. Of course. Right. Right. I I mean, as an additional thing, Yeah, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. Yeah. um, Football is such a dependent sport. Uh, If, 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 Okay, my my senior year at the university, my junior year at the University of Minnesota, I played half the downs. I alternated with a senior on the team. Uh, I ended up leading the Big Ten in sacks, tied with Andre Tippett. Um, We had a decent team. Uh, My senior year, we won our first three games. A bunch of guys got injured. We lost our last eight, and we lost our last eight by a whole bunch of of points. And uh, I never got a chance to rush the passer. There was because they just ran the ball because they were so far ahead all the time. So, I mean, it, it, so much of, of your personal stats depend on how your team is doing and how you're used um, and, and uh, you know, what uh, what situation you're in. So so I, I was on a great team. I mean, we in the 12 years I played for the Broncos, we had a losing season twice. Uh, that I mean, that that was a strong team. Um, and, and I was. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be the focus of the defense. Uh, Coach Collier would put me where he put, thought the, the point of attack was going to be. And there's no better place in my mind to be as a defensive player than the point of attack. But that was the coach's decision. That was my, wasn't my decision. Uh, and and so, so in my mind, it's, it's really difficult to sort out, uh, first of all, just team to team within one era and then era by era. I mean, you look at, at – like I said earlier, I'd love to be in in the NFL right now because it's it's all about rushing the passer. Those <laughs> are the guys yeah. that you'd, uh, be, you'd that, be making you'd be a killing. Oh, oh yeah, I would have had a blast playing it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, you don't have to play the run. You you just you're just coming after the quarterback over and over yeah. again. That, that would have been great. Yeah, listen, as a guy who grew up watching Carl, you know, in New York, we got to see him in the Super Bowl, which you know we won't talk about that too much for you. I know that you know was was a bad one, but. You know, you knew he was one of the best defenders of the game. You know, you, you look forward to watching him. If you like defense, which I've always loved defense, yep. you know, you knew, you knew who Carl was. You, you studied what he did, and he was by far one of the best of the game. I had a question, though, sent in by one of the guys here from Sideline Sports, whose nephew is actually a slot receiver on uh, the Minnesota Gophers, uh, Troy Geary. Uh, he had asked, what do you, what's your thoughts of 
Um, Minnesota doing in the Big Ten West this year. Do you think they have a shot? I do think they have a shot. Uh, their PJ Fleck is an amazing coach. Uh, I don't know if you guys have followed him out there, but he is a guy that uh, is a perfect guy in today's world as far as as far as uh, college coaching. He's so upbeat. The kids love him. Uh, he, he's like a magnet for these transfer kids. <laughs> Anybody, like all, it, it, and and that's a hard thing to do. I mean, the old college coach, you know, the kind of the the rough and 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 tumble and, and hard on his guys coach really can't survive in today's world with the transfer rules. And so, so I think they've picked up a, a lot of good players that way. Um, and, and he's a great uh, tactician. He's a, he, he's a motivator. Uh, I've, I've spent a little time with him and, and I'm, I'm impressed it, that what he's been able to do in that system and, and in that, in that conference, that's a tough conference uh, has, has been impressive to me at this point. Yeah. So, so Carl and, and John, don't say anything on this because I know what you want to say. And I, I, when I ask this, you'll want to get I in. No idea, so I but... just want Carl's opinion on this only. <laughs> so no, and John, you'll understand me in a minute. No, we have constantly debated who is the greatest quarterback to ever play. And John is a Dolphins fan and he's a big Dan Marino guy. And Carl, you played against two of the guys that are usually in our conversation. You know, we didn't. We, we usually have about four people, I would say. It's Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, and Dan Marino, and you played against two of them, Marino and Montana. You actually played in the Super Bowl against them, so I wanted to get your opinion. Granted, you haven't played against two of those guys, but you know that I mentioned. But you played against yeah. Marino and Montana. Who do you think is the greatest quarterback of all time? Is it one of those, or is it somebody I've even mentioned? That's John Elway. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I should have seen that coming. That, should, that was a loaded it was question. In I should have seen it. It was, yeah. right that that. Actually, actually, Marino was my favorite guy to sack because you not only would you sack him, but then he'd get up and he'd cuss and he'd scream and he'd yell at his <laughs> offensive lineman that you just beat. So that was always fun. I love it. <laughs> but the reason, anyway, the reason I was saying that is because John, I knew would want to jump and say Dan Marino is the best, so I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> I didn't like, want to hear that. Hey, I've never seen anybody throw the football like that That's man. Fine. And, and he was I in a an era where you, it was all about running the football, but yet. He was the first of his kind. Like there was nobody. Like he started what we see today. Like he he was the beginning of that. He was ahead of his well, time. That's so, re real quick, Carl. You said John Elway. Now I want to hear why you. Why did you say John Elway? Not just because he was your team. I'm, I'm I'm legitimately curious your analysis. Yeah, on why. yeah. Um, John was John was was everything you wanted a quarterback. He he was an unbelievable leader. Uh, he was just, a, he was a tough guy. He he could run, run the ball. He could throw the ball. Uh, if, if playing as a defensive player uh, on, on a team with, with John Elway as its quarterback, you could take chances. You could make mistakes, get behind a little bit. Cause you knew if it was somewhat close at the end of the game, we were coming back and we were winning that thing. And I, okay. and, and I saw it over and over and over again, he would will his teammates and he would will himself to, to get it done. And he, I mean, he was a, an unbelievable player. Uh, and, and, and uh, if he didn't play in the era that he played and, and under Dan Reeves for a lot of that time, who was, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust, um, <laughs> he'd have a lot higher stats than he had. All right. Okay. I, hey, see, I like the explanation though. That's why I, I figured if you're going to give me an answer, you've got a good explanation behind it. That's why <laughs> I, I had to ask. I, I didn't mention Elway on purpose, knowing that there was a pretty good chance that was going to be your answer. But I was yeah, like, it was coming. I don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> so um after football you got into motivational speaking who were the who were some of the coaches that you had or who uh kind of got you into doing motivational speaking what was your uh inspiration for that you know i it wasn't a plan it wasn't something that i was looking at as my future i, I wasn't one of the and a lot of a lot of athletes are communications majors in college i, I was not i was a biology major but uh, I got I got the opportunity to speak and, and it and it made it was so much like football, which doesn't sound right. But but truthfully, you, you prepare for your uh, for the organization you're speaking for. Uh, you perform at a high level for a short period of time. You evaluate what went on. You you repeat what went well. You throw out what didn't go well and then you get ready for the next one. I mean, it's football without the injuries and and. Uh, I, I feel like I'm making a difference in, in a lot of organizations around the country. Um, I do about 40 keynotes a year. 
uh, and have for 17 years and, and just, uh, just love the job. Uh, most people are fortunate to find one job they love in a lifetime. And, and I've got a second one and, and have, uh, ha- have, uh, grown and, and, and learned, uh, a lot through the national speakers association and the national speakers association is a group of like-minded, uh, speakers who, uh, share best practices and, and, uh, you know, meet now and again and, and, uh, uh, it's 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 my team now, and and I really I really enjoy that uh, those those relationships. That that's awesome. So, how closely are you following the Broncos today? Oh, very closely. Yeah, you can't help it here in Denver. It, it's a it's a football town. So, what what's your overall impression so far? I know it's only game one, but with Russell Wilson as quarterback, do you think last night was a fluke that they'll be fine? Or do you think that it's going to be a couple of years before you're back in uh, serious contention? Yeah, no, last night was uh, a zillion mistakes because they hadn't played in the preseason. Um, if you look at the statistics of the teams that uh, played their first teamers and their, their starting quarterbacks in the, uh, in the preseason who played against uh, teams who uh, – sat everybody out in the preseason. I think the, this, this week it was, uh, it was three and eight, uh, the, 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 the numbers. So three, uh, three wins for the teams that didn't play their quarterbacks and their starters and, and eight losses. And, and usually those are the better teams because they feel confident and can rest their people. So, uh, so yeah, that's just, it's just like a preseason game. They're, they're, they're learning about each other. Uh, there were a lot of mistakes, uh, and 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 part of that was the coaching. Um, but the coaches are all in positions they've never never been in either. Each of the coordinators are are new to being coordinators. Uh, the head coach obviously is new to being a head coach. Um, they got a new quarterback. They got new ownership. They got new everything. It's I mean, all brand it new. Takes a while, right? If if you match up a bunch of people just thrown together right now. Uh, against a team that has played together for a while and has had had that steady coaching and uh, and 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 steady leadership like the Seattle has, then yeah, they lost by one point. They fumbled twice on a goal line. I mean, it, it, it yeah. yeah, they they were very close to winning that game and it, and they they didn't play well and they made a lot of bad decisions. So so yeah, they've got a lot of talent. Um, now they got to become a team. That's I like that. And how many? How many games? How many preseason games did you play in the seventies? Because I was told Mer- Mercury Morris told me they used to play six. Pre-season. Yeah, yeah. I started in eighty three, um, and and we played four, four. and okay. we played a, a good good chunk of each game. Um, even, that, even but that's what I was alluding game. to is you guys played the preseason games. It wasn't oh, like yeah. you played one series and and sat. No, they weren't. They 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 weren't afraid of us getting hurt. That I mean, we we were full pads, two a day practices all through training. We had five weeks of training camp. I mean, it was knock down, drag out, last guy standing makes the team kind of deal. And 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 yeah, but you no, were they, ready they, they, for they the season, concerned. right? When it oh came. yeah, okay. oh yeah, we were more than ready for the season that okay. for the first okay. game. Now we didn't have seventeen games, although we didn't have a bye either. Um, so. So yeah, things. Kinda, things I think it all cancels out happening. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and and you know it it. I I think the game is safer. Um, I think the game is uh is uh exciting still and interesting still. Um, it's just different. My grandfather was a little all American at the University of North Dakota. He played in the twenties. Um, and and I remember watching a, a game on Thanksgiving with him. And he, he weighed 185 pounds dripping wet, right? And he was a center and a nose guard. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm sitting next to him saying, hey, Grandpa, these guys are really big. I, I don't think you could play in today's game. Hell, boy, I played when it was a man's game. We had no pants <laughs> past and had no pads in our pants. We had to play both ways. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about the guys now, right? It's just the game changes. It evolves. Yeah. People will be saying that in another 20, 30 years, right? They'll be saying right. the same thing. Yep, exactly. So one constant in pretty much all of sports when you yeah. look at it, it just right. you know it's different through different eras. That's why it's so hard to compare great players in different eras. 
Right. right. I mean, that discussion about the the Hall of Fame, you know, it, it, not only does each team ask different things of each player at each position, but era to era is completely different. You, I mean, play, playing an inside linebacker, when I played an inside linebacker, my job was stopping the run. Right. And an now inside it's... linebacker now, uh, you know, a big piece of it is pass coverage. I mean, that, more right. often than not, uh, every they're smaller and they're faster. They're more like what the safeties were when I was playing. Oh, well, there you go. All, All right. right. Well, Carl, thank you so much for taking the time to come out. You know, we appreciate it. And, yes. you know, we'd love to have you back in the future, but definitely thanks for taking a few minutes coming out tonight. And you have a great evening. I appreciate it, JB. If anybody wants to look up uh, what I'm doing as far as speaking, bring me out to speak. You can go to carlmecklenburg.com. Uh, you can you misspell know. it many different ways and still, <laughs> get, still get there. So, and, and I'd love to hear from you. Yes, check All out right. our check out our social media. We'll make sure we post uh, post that so that way if you're not sure how to spell it, we will have it. We'll make sure we have it for you on for you guys so that way <laughs> we have that out there. Yes, sounds good. All right, Carl, Thanks, have Carl. a good one. We appreciate you coming on. Of course, thank you. Thanks again, Carl. Have a great night. Bye now. All right, boys. All right, what are we talking about now, gentlemen? What's up next? Uh, I got the first one. Hold on, before go we start for it. anything. I, actually, before... no, give me give me two seconds. Just two yeah. seconds of airtime. Mentally time. prepare yourself for no. Where just this give me two seconds of airtime. Going. I just for anybody that's watching live, Aaron Judge just hit number fifty six. That's it. I got nothing else. I just are you sure be... you spelled that right? <laughs> yes, we are certain. Um, but yeah, that's right. it. I just just wanted to say, Judge number fifty six. Uh, that's not 60. even important with what I'm going to say. Who hey, cares about him actually, potentially you know breaking let me, the all-time let me a, home run record? Let me let me say one more thing, and this is on a serious note. The Queen has passed, so I think we take a moment of silence for uh, John. Big deal. Keep. I got more important things to talk about. Things I. All right. Let me finish what I was saying because there are people that do care about that. Are we on in Europe, peace. John? Are we on in England? Just with the may she TV rest in peace. For those yes. that are affected, I'm sorry. That's it. Just, John, we just, you, you got to cater to other people. You can't. Yeah, but this pretend. interrupts what I want to say. So I don't John, care. Whatever John, you have to say is John, not more important than that. John. We're on one of the, the cable networks in England, oh, John. You're just, you took you're a minute mean. away from my from what I was going to say. So. All right, Oscar the Grouch, let's go. What's up? All right, this is more important than Aaron Judge hitting 61 because that's the all-time home run record, blah, blah, blah. On Saturday, I was at work, okay? And every Saturday when I come into work, they put out snack cakes for us, all right? Uh -oh. This lady beside me grabs this story's Swiss, already telling me. I know. She grabs the Swiss rolls. She grabs right. a pair of Swiss rolls because they're fantastic. She I calls them those, Twinkies. Yes. And well, I look at wrong. her, and I stop her, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't. You're not getting away with that. Swiss <laughs> rolls. And, or Swiss and rolls. I proceed to take three minutes out of the break, and I'm like, hey, Swiss rolls are up here. Twinkies are down here. They're Hold not on. the same thing. They're John. not in the same category. Swiss rolls are top tier. Twinkies are bottom Hold tier. There's John, I just a have a quick difference. question. Make sure you know. Wow. John, what does that have to do with anything? I mean, because I agree. I, I think I understand. There are, there are people in this world that, that think Swiss like rolls Twinkies. and Twinkies are the same thing, there and they're go. just not. You I can't think do what that. he means is the, tennis, the Tennessee Titans and the LA Rams are Twinkies. <sighs> That's I, what I think he means. I can't argue with that. The Giants are 1 0, baby. This is I an think odd feeling. That's where he's going. Guys, I just. I got to say it, and I'm putting this one out to the world. And let me – hear me out before I say this, before before you say anything. The New York football giants will be making the playoffs this season. And there is Absolutely. one reason I will say that. I love that. it. I love the optimism. There's only one reason. This is the most Absolutely. weird, wacky, wild stat in the last approximately uh, about – I think it's technically 11 years. But we'll say 10 years. The Giants have started 1-0. and only three times prior to this uh, – actually, twice, excuse me. Twice prior to this season, to, to the start of the season, 2011 when we won the Super Bowl and 2000 – and I believe it was 15 or 16 when we went to the playoffs, the boat, the infamous boat year. Every other year, we've started 0-1, and, and we missed this the is... playoffs. In all these other years, we missed the playoffs. But in the past – I think it's because technically 11 years. 11 years, we've started 1-0. We've made the playoffs. There is no other reason wow. 
other than that, that I said the New York Giants are making the playoffs. Thank Since you. 2016, there's one one week out of the end of one week out of every NFL season since 2016 that the Giants have had a positive record. That's this week. This is the first time since 2016 they've had a positive yeah. record. Let that, that was, sink listen, in. How bad they I, I am the most disgruntled Giants fan. You are. In you're the that, you're the you're Oscar that, the Grouch of every sports that, team you love. That, you hate that every sports team you love. <laughs> lose the game when I pick when I pick against you with a suicide pool. Lose I've, the game. I've never you heard no you talk good about game. any of your sports teams. Only bad. JB, don't you know the rule? Don't bet on your own teams ever, no matter what, whether it's to win or lose. It's, just don't. You can pick. You can pick your team to lose. You can't no. pick your team to win when you bet. Yeah. You should yeah. never look what happens You're when always, you bet on. You bet on the Giants. Somebody put lost. up a. Somebody put up a Twitter poll. Is it okay to bet against your team? Hey, you know what? Let's ask Pete Rose. <laughs> oh, that is a that is a loaded question, and you that, know it. Yeah, that's that, that just that's low. like. That's like asking A Rod or Barry Bonds or Mark McGuire, hey, is it okay to use steroids? Well, I think we know the answer they're going to give us. You're just setting them up. Come on. I mean, what is this? Listen, me and Peter are the same boat on this one. It's okay to bet against your own team. And you know what happened to both of you? You both lost at the end of the day. It's the same reason I don't pick my own players in fantasy. The bias is there. I always try and stay away from the bias. I, I. I stay away from it. If you bet, stay away from the bias. And you know what? Speaking of fantasy, John, we're in a couple leagues together, the three of us. I'm in one with you guys. Oh, yeah, you're not in the other one. All right. right, So JB JB and I are in two leagues together. Um, Only one of the two leagues that we play, but Mr. Ellis, I'd like to say to you, good game, but you lost, as I told you you would. Joe Burrow, who got crushed in real life, Having five turnovers still beat you. That's, that's all right. right. And I beat more you by 13 points. More importantly, I lost the suicide pool. That, that's what we're talking about. Fantasy football, season long fantasy football, that's over. We got the only uh, I mean, it's over. There's oh, seven. And by the way, which is a perfect transition into the next topic I'd like to speak about, which I think is a good football related topic, actually. JB, if, if you recall in the league that we have with John, I had, it's a two quarterback league. And I admit I was in a very precarious situation. I last year traded some draft picks away. So quarterback wise, I was Matt Stafford, which was fine. You know, it was a bad week one, but fantasy wise, I was happy to have him as a quarterback before the season started. I had no problem with that. And I had Daniel Jones, which I'll tell you is I love my giants. He may have won this week. I would never want him as my fantasy quarterback. I barely want him as my starting quarterback in real life. JB offered to give me a quarterback. He said, I'll give you a first. If you give me a first rounder, I'll give you Dak Prescott. I said, no. I later, as we all know, as we, I, I believe I told the story last week or the week before, I traded Jacob Christner, who was also in that league. I managed to get uh, Jameis Winston, who had a very nice week this week. Everything is great. JB, you had Dak and wanted to trade me to him, and understandably so. He's a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong, fantasy-wise especially. Dak Prescott has an injured – I believe they said he fractured his thumb. He is out a yes, minimum out. of six weeks now. Not according to Jerry yes, Jones. Bad. According Jerry to Jerry Jones, Jones he believes it's like yeah. four weeks. But right. Jerry, Jerry Jones, Jones, Jones lived in La La Jerry Land. Jones exactly. also has Santa Claus staying at his house right now. <laughs> Santa is on vacation in is Dallas. Is that Mike McCarthy? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but, They're having so, a sleepover. The rumor so, is the tooth fairy un- may show up. Who, who sleeps on the to top, top of the bunk bed and who sleeps on the bottom of their bunk ah, beds? Like, like I don't want to know. How about that? Well, Mike what McCarthy would have to know? be on the bottom of the bunk beds. Like Jerry Jones would have to get the know. cool part at the top. He is a horrible that. coach. I've seen so much bad coaching and announcing week one of the NFL season. Like, if the Giants don't keep winning now that the suicide pool is over, you know, I'm ready for postseason baseball. You guys have to be Debbie happy Brooks. with what Dable did, like I'm ripping into happy. Daniel listen, Jones. For listen, watching the, watching the end of that game, the Giants outcoached them, outplayed them, and beat a really good team. And I think that was Dable's fault. Like yeah. I think Dable is the reason that they won that game. I wouldn't say fault. You mean 
He's no, the no, like in a good yeah, way. Yeah, like yeah, he okay. was the reason. But, anyway, but on, so I want to get back okay, to the topic. But you haven't had that coaching that. in the jet with the Giants in no, a very long time. No, but no, since Tom Coughlin, I want to fire. You're right. But what I wanted to get to was the Cowboys' next six games. Just the next six. Forget if Dak is out longer than six weeks, because I think Jerry Jones' four weeks is delusional. But even if you want to do the next four weeks, I'm welcome. You know, I'm perfectly happy to. But the next six games. The Cowboys might be in some real trouble if they don't trade for a quarterback. The Bengals next week, there's no chance they beat the Bengals with at this point. They're not going to get a quarterback rushed. fast enough. Right. At this at this point in time, the Bengals will be playing against Cooper Rush. And so that's automatically the Cowboys are already 0-2. Then they go into the Giants. And on a Monday night, if they don't trade for a quarterback, I'm going to be honest. This is not a Giants bias. There is a chance the Cowboys also go 0-3 now. It's a now. division it's a, game, it's of a course. division game. Division and, game's and, a toss-up. Right. That's what I'm saying. Away. With Cooper yeah. Rush at the helm, I think there is – I don't think that they have a chance. I, I don't know that they're going to be able to stay uh, – Daniel Jones is better than Cooper Rush. He's not good, but he's better. He's better than oh, much better. saying much. Much better. Okay. Then they go and they play at home against the Commanders. I got to be honest with you. The way Carson Wentz played the other day wasn't bad. I could see no, the Cowboys because, losing because, another game. Stop. Carson Wentz being his first game, of course, will play well. And that's like, fine. Pressure okay. on him. So. And, and, but so let's say they win that game. Let's. I'll, I'll accept that we say that win it. It's division. So now we're talking about four games in. The Cowboys are one and three. Then they go on the road in October. They play at the Rams. I think they stand oh, that's zero a, that's chance. A slaughter. So now they're one and five. And the sixth and final game that Dak Prescott, uh, I think, hold on, is that four or five? No, he's got to miss two, six, three, and he already four. missed the first. This is five. Uh, this would be the fifth game, excuse me, is at the Eagles. I think the way Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense is just going to crush the, uh, excuse me, the Cowboys. So now we're talking about the Cowboys at best being one and five right now. And then we go Lions, Cowboys, and honestly, the Cowboys are a better defense but the Lions actually looked okay this weekend. The Lions are not a bad team, guys. I, I, I could they could honestly, possibly be one in six. Honestly, they could be one in six. And let's say Dak goes out eight weeks. Then we got the Bears and Cowboys and back to excuse me, Bears and Packers against the Cowboys in the next two weeks. We're talking about if they don't trade for a quarterback, the Cowboys maybe have three wins if they're lucky at, at this point in the season. The Cowboys True. are in trouble, guys. True. I mean I'm, I'm saying maybe three if the they're lucky. The season's I'm, over I'm, is what Jake's saying. The yeah. season's over. So, like so that well, that's, what, that's what happens when you don't have a quality backup quarterback. I, I look, you know what? And so that raises the question. What's what happens do? when you don't have a quality starter? I wouldn't call him. All right. Right. He's Look, he's good enough. In our division, he's good enough. He's good enough to guarantee you second place in our division, which is a playoff spot at this point. But anyway. If you give him a small assortment of talent. And he ha- he doesn't have well they already did it this year they started to take away his talent they took away his line basically took yeah. away Amari Cooper took away Cedric Wilson Wilson he didn't look very good at least for one game no. or almost the whole game no Cam Newton is washed stop it stop well, with that nonsense so hold on. so he is John so hold on. that's a but that's stop. a fair comment because it does go in the direction of what I was going to ask which is. What do the Cowboys do for quarterback? They can't stay with Cooper Rush. We saw so what Cam do they do? In well, didn't Carolina they do this? Last I year, he forget was about Cam Newton for a second, but did it? Did it? They do this a couple of years ago. Who was their backup when uh, Dalton got hurt? When uh, Dalton was the backup. Well, well, Dak got hurt, and then Dalton got hurt. Right, Dak got hurt. Dalton got hurt. And, and then it became Ben Dalton. DiNucci or whatever. I was gonna say that was right. Ben and, DiNucci, and right? Played, and he played for how long? So I mean, listen, this is the Cowboys I, thing. They, they listen, yeah, no, it's over, and I think you know what? If Cam, if they can get Cam, it's a quality starter. It's better than it what they have. It's better it's than better, Cooper Rush. It's not gonna. It it's not gonna change that they're done. They could still make the playoffs because outside of the division leaders in the NFC, there's nothing it's where very weak. there's very weak. Like there's nothing yeah. really like they can slip into the playoffs at eight and nine or nine and eight. Like it's very possible because the NFC is extremely yeah. weak outside division. There's leaders. what? Seven playoff spots now? Seven right? playoff spots. So, so Niners probably get in Vikings or Packers get the other wild card. And then really it's, it's fair game about, for that last You're talking spot. about the NFC West. Maybe you're talking about the Cardinals. There's a chance. You never know. 
Just saying. But I'm just saying. It's not like, impossible. No, but I'm saying it's not impossible. Or, or, or you, you got to do Cowboys something right chance. away. Yeah. You got to do something now. You can't wait. Uh, and, so you know. That's that's what I was getting at. What do you do? If you're the Cowboys, what do you do in this situation? You, you've got to go for a quarterback, right? I mean, you, you can't just I sit in the I think you got to call for Jimmy G. Like, at yeah, the, I, and the so, right yeah that's why I asked this. Because to me, Jimmy G seems like so, a, a decent option. Yeah. So if you're the 49ers after seeing how you lost in Chicago, are you traded Jimmy G? Right. So if I'm the 49ers, I'm willing to trade him. And the reason I say that is because I'm the 49ers. I'm confident in Trey Lance. The 49ers have made it abundantly clear they trust you. But they're they not. Made it abund- they made it abundantly they clear. Were, they they traded him already. Jake, have you read the have you read the reports? Then why is like, he starting? He, he they traded up to get him. They traded everything to get him. I know. John Lynch wanted him. Kyle Shanahan didn't. Well, that's not the that doesn't matter. Shanahan will be replaced. But that if means that happens. Shanahan doesn't trust him. Doesn't matter. He's not the final say, is my point though. Right, Shanahan's the coach, so Lynch will have to say over him. That's my point. But we saw with Brian Flores and Tua, like if a coach doesn't trust you, he's not going to put go all in on you. You know what I mean? Like, like a quarterback and quarterback and head coach have to be tied at the hip. If they're not, that's not going to. That's fine. But the difference is, John, the coach doesn't make the final decision as to who gets traded or not, and that's one hundred percent. That's why I say I'm the Forty Niners. That's why if I'm the 49ers, I do trade Jimmy G. Why? But because if I'm ownership. Him, would... if, I, if I'm ownership, I'm crazy because we love Trey Lance. If I'm like Shanahan, if I'm Shanahan, Shanahan. I'm saying absolutely not. I think no Jake, chance. If they were going to trade him, if they were to trade him, why wouldn't they have traded him already? Because nobody if wanted him. Nobody because needs of him. The, it's because how much he costs and nobody wants to pay, tw- I think it's $27 exactly. million. For Jimmy Garoppolo, for a backup. like that's a that's a lot for a right. guy that's but a my game point manager. Is, but again, my the question you asked me was, if I'm the Niners, do I trade him? Yes, if because if I'm I'm thinking strictly as the Niners front office, not Shanahan, not the players on the field. The front office seems to really like Trey Lance. That's the only reason I say okay, that. Okay, Jake, but that's to, the only to reason. JB's point because JB mentioned it. We saw what happened against the Bears. I know. The, the conditions, I, I don't really like know what to think of Lance yet because oh, those hard. conditions, it's, it's nobody's going to play, really play well. It was well awful, yeah, yeah. But if you're not sure of him and you get to the point where like he struggles for like a month and a half, what do you do? So, like, look, you can't bench him and go to somebody here, else. Here's what I say, John. If you're asking me personally as Jake, I yep. think trading Jimmy G – is the worst decision the Niners could ever make. Because at the very least, Jimmy G is an accurate passer. He does enough to not lose games. He is a solid game manager, and that's what he is. But He's the as best a game manager, policy but probably exactly. in the game. Right? He'll do exactly what you need him to do. You'll let the rest of your offense play the way it does. They'll do a good enough job. You'll be fine. You'll score points. Your defense will play well. You'll make the playoffs. That is what Jimmy G is to me. So if you're asking Jake, I think don't trade him at all because if you get into a sticky situation, you have I a agree. guaranteed safety net. If on the 49ers who seem to love Trey Lance, that's why my opinions differ. I personally am going to tell you, I think if they trade Jimmy G, they're going to be, gonna, they better be getting a King's ransom for yeah, him. They, and because, they should. Because, because of how, how much they're giving away in potential wins and how much they're also how to desperate get rid of the Cowboys are or whoever right. at this point. But So if I'm the Cowboys, I'm calling for him if I can get him. Now, you have to get him at the right price, but I'm going for him because, like I just said, with the right weapons, with the right people around him, he'll manage the game. He'll win you enough games and keep you afloat, which is all the Cowboys need right now. While Dak is recovering, all they want is to stay afloat, stay near the top of the division, and not get destroyed. Have a chance at the playoffs. Next season's over. It doesn't matter. Jimmy G isn't going to make them a better team. Zeke just doesn't have it. You know, McCarthy's a horrible coach. If this is the Eagles division, you know, right now, okay. honestly, looking at the teams after the first week, Giants have a great shot at second place, you know. Uh, second or third is honestly possible, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, if, if I can't right now, with, anyway. without, da- without Dak, if you're not playing for 30. Well, the Commanders are not. The Commanders not play as, the Giants. Like, I don't buy it. Yeah, no, they're, I, they're I not, listen, they're a step behind. They're not horrible, but. 
they're still a step behind. They're going in the That's right fun. direction. But right now, like I said, the Eagles, Eagles, Cowboys, Giants, Commanders. Now, right now, flip flop. Eagles, Giants, Cowboys, Commanders. I might even say Commanders, Cowboys. I. It's possible I because it's, it's possible. It That's depends. a toss up for me. Yeah, it depends when Dak comes back. What I happens? Agree. Yeah, you're right, but you know that's why I said the Giants could make the playoffs, and I was making a joke about it. But They're as we discuss it further, but... in second place, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know, like I I can't tell you what other teams are going to look like around the league. But there are three open spots after the division winners. Three second place teams most likely will make the playoffs. It's most likely going to be three second teams, unless the Giants are just that bad of a second place team, or is a really good third place team, right? most likely we're going to have division winners and three second place teams making the playoffs. If the giants play well enough, I'm not saying good and Saquon continues to play the way he's playing. Cause let's just call it what it is. Saquon is the giants offense. He is literally all they have right now. And he was phenomenal in that win because Daniel Jones continues to th- turn the ball over and, and doesn't help the giants really a lot of time. I think he hurts them, but so but the, the, point, the giants have a chance. That's my, so I want to argue JB's point about how Zeke doesn't have it because I'm going to give you a little bit either. of stats. I'm going to give you a little bit of stats on that because you're wrong. And I'm going to prove it to you. Um, so okay. I want to hear that. Zeke, Zeke's, because, career, his first the year, Zeke's first year, he touched the ball over 350 times. His second year, he didn't because remember he was suspended. He only touched the ball. 250 that's, plus times, but we remember the suspension. That's, he still had, that's fair to discount. Like, right. He still had 15 touchdowns yeah. his rookie year, seven touchdowns even with the suspension. All right. 2018, he touched the ball almost 400 times. 2019, touched the ball over 350 times. Back to back years, he had over 1,300 yards. So, he had okay. six touchdowns and 12 touchdowns. Kellen Moore has come in. 2020 was when Kellen Moore came in. 244 carries. 2021, Kellen Moore's there, 237 carries. This year, against the Bucks, when Dak goes out, he carries the ball 10 times for 52 yards in that game, 5.2 per carry. Like, his his career average is never going below four. It was 5.1, 4.1. John, if they're not giving the ball, he no, doesn't have it. But that's not you his fault. you got to have fault. the ball to have it. No, but that's, so, that's JB, not hold his on. fault. If he's carrying matter. over four it yards not, per game, he had 10 I have touchdowns to last year. No. I like think you got if you, if you, you don't have, if you don't have the think, ball, John, you don't you, have. If you got give a guy 100 less plate appearances a year, of course his stats are going to be worse. I think a better argument would be of course, of Ezekiel course. Elliott oh, is argument. being underused. I think yes. that's a better argument. And I said that because, last year, and I agree with you. But at the same point, if you're not giving him the ball, he doesn't have it. I don't he, think that's accurate. I don't think that that's a fair statement to me. His make. stats don't say that though. His his stats when he does touch the ball indicate he does have the ability to make right. plays, which implies he has it, as as you put it, right? When you give him the ball, he clearly is producing. He's not – he's only had two seasons in his entire career where he was under 1,000 yards. That's it. Two seasons. And Every other one of them, the ball, he was – and, and the 2017 – he doesn't have the ball, he does not have it. In 2017, when he simple. didn't hit 1,000 yards, that was the year he was suspended. Exactly. Right. So but if you don't have the ball, you don't have it. I mean, he's but averaging four and a half yards per I don't think that's it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. If you don't I, have the ball, you don't have it. I completely disagree. I think that's a baloney statement. Yeah, like the numbers, the numbers I, are telling you you're right. I think like, what you what you JB, you always give me you've you've given this as an argument before, and I'll use it in a different context. You play who you play, right? You can only play who's right. on your schedule. Right. Zeke can only play as much as he's given the ball himself. So what your argument in, in the you only play who you can play, you play those on your schedule, right? You can only beat the people that are on your schedule, even if it's the easiest schedule in the world or if it's the hardest schedule in the world. Well, too bad. That's what you got. If in Zeke's case, in him, he would get the ball more. I Kellen Moore, it, remember, Kellen Moore was a quarterback for Boise Correct. State. What does Kellen Moore do? Yeah. He wants to prove that he is the offensive coordinator, the best offensive coordinator in the NFL. What's he going to do? He's going to make sure Dak throws the ball because Dak threw the ball 596 times last year, and Zeke only ran it 237. Why not, why not balance year, though, it out? Because why they, are you they throwing were getting blown out a bunch times? of games. Huh? God, they were getting blown out a bunch of games that they had to come back in. 
Okay, so, so then that's why we had the number so one offense. Hold on, hold on, John. Hold on to JB to your point. Then, then how can you say Zeke didn't have it last year? If they were getting blown out in games, it's not his fault he wasn't getting the ball. So you can't say he didn't have it because he didn't have an that, opportunity that's to get true. it. That's true. He did. Yeah. Based on game, your logic, go back, go back and watch the films in obvious situations where you should be handing the ball off. They were not. Can you name? That's so, not his fault. Can you name any? You know, actually, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> To, let me. I'll I'll argue this again because I I can't believe I agree this much with John. Okay, <laughs> I will ask you a very honest question, and I think the, yes. I don't. It, it's admittedly a loaded question because there is one right answer. You can't possibly argue any other way, and if you do, I think you're just insane. The nice. Seahawks. Be a, the Seahawks versus no Seahawks versus Pats. When they didn't hand it to Marshawn Lynch, that was a clear run situation. There's no question anybody argues that. Can we all agree on that right. first? That should have been oh, right. More, right. Just right. right. So we all agree on that. But you're saying there's obvious situations in what we just saw at the Cowboys last year that Zeke should have ran the ball. But you're arguing that he doesn't have it. So in that situation, Pats versus Seahawks, are you going to tell me that Marshawn Lynch didn't have it and that's why that, they didn't run that, it? Or, that's or a hold one-off. on. Or, hold on. That's a one off. You're talking about what hold situation? On. Hold on. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Stop, it's a situational stop. conversation. It's Hold a, on. It's a Let me one finish off. my question to you. I had Zeke on my fantasy team last year, so you don't I have did to. Too. Let I me finish Zeke the question. My, and I've finish. watched enough Cowboys games to see that they were putting Let... in Tony John, Pollard. That, so, it, that's... you know, they just did it, did it and trust Zeke for whatever but, reason. But and if you don't is... trust... No. When we, when we watch Titans games, Derrick Henry right. usually starts off pretty slow. Like, that's how... But the more he carries the ball, when he gets to the third and fourth quarter, guess what happens? Oh, Derrick Henry broke off 21 yards. Oh, Derrick Henry broke off 15. There he goes for a 50-yard run. He gets better the more you give him the ball. Zeke, that's why it's feed Zeke, because he gets better the more you give it to him. No if kidding. Giving it I to agree. Him, last year, J- I agree. Last year, J.B. You have to trust they got to keep doing it. Right. And but that's last year, not- J.B., he had a career low 13 carries per game. How can Zeke get better in a game more and more if you're giving him it 13 times a game? A bell so cow needs the ball 20 when, sometimes like Derrick Henry gets. When you are an offensive coordinator, you're looking at what you have. If you think that Zeke needs the ball 20 times and he has it, you're giving the ball 20 times because he's going to win games for you. They're not, so he does not have it. Maybe Kellen Moore just isn't a good offensive coordinator. Or maybe he's just a pass-first guy. Maybe. Have you just thought about he's a pass first Maybe guy? Maybe he's just pass happy guy because he is no, a former quarterback. No, because they gave the ball to Pollard so much. Why would you have him in the game as much as they did last year? Pollard because is also split... receiving back. I'd like to point that out. You want that to argue wear and tear, I guess. I don't. It doesn't make sense how you go from giving a before Cal Moore came three hundred and fifty to four hundred touches anyway, a year. Back, back to my point. Just makes no back sense. to my back to my point. The argument that I was simply making and was going to ask you, if if we all agree Marshawn Lynch should have got the ball in that situation, but he didn't, how can you, you know, can you argue that in that moment was Marshawn Lynch, did he not have it? Or was it just so, bad play calling in the moment, which is not anything play, reflection was, on how good he is? In that one play, it was bad play calling. But once again, when the backup Pollard is in the game and running the ball, even though he's a pass back, and look at how many carries he had that he stole from Zeke. He had like six carries, I think. Not the one game. I'm talking about last year. Again, I had Zeke. He was one of my top picks, so I watched a lot of Cowboy games. <laughs> they just didn't trust Zeke. You have to well, watch that's the game, stupid. though. To see like, that. He's not giving them I agree with you. Statistically to okay. I, Either way, JB, there are no stats that back up your argument that Zeke does not have it. The only stat you're using to argue this is the carries per game. But what matters for a running back, and really this is all the people we care about, really, I think, so, is hold so on, if I got, is yards if per Giants carry. Put me in, if the Giants put me in Sunday and I got a 20-yard run and I never carry the ball again, I'm a great running back. In your one appearance, yeah. No. In your one appearance. No, I'm still horseshit. No. <laughs> that's not in it. Your, in, I not it. Who's Did I ask a sample that's not guys it. to know? I, I said in your one ball. appearance, you were great. You're, that was yeah. a great play. Yeah. I didn't say you're a great running back. I said Listen, one play. Kellen, Kellen Moore is horrible. 
and Zeke just doesn't have it anymore. If he had You're it, they'd be given the You're bowl. completely wrong. They'd You're, be Zeke, given him the bowl. You have no factual evidence to back that up. Okay. No factual evidence. The factual evidence is the his total yards and his amount of carries. Before, before if, if, I wanted to win, if I wanted to win games and I have Zeke Elliott who can run the ball, why am I handing the ball to Pollard? Before JB, Kellen I'm going to rattle off some stats, and I want you to tell me whether or not this person is a great running back. Just yes or no. I'm not telling you who it is. And don't try to play mind games and figure out if it's a Zeke or not, because I'm going to tell you now, Don't you're going to lose that game if you play it, because you're going to make yourself look like a fool. Okay? Yards per carry is what I'm going to look for. So let me find that real quick. Yards per uh, carry doesn't mean anything. Every First of all, being a running back in the NFL is situational. When you're the starting guy and you're supposed to be the man, your backup should not be in there taking your carries away in key situations. Go back and watch the Cowboys film last year, okay. and you will Jamie, see. Jamie, let me just read off a couple seasons of this person. Week. This person had 285 carries, 1,200 yards, 315 carries, about 1,600 yards, 300 carries, 1,250 yards, 280 carries for 1,300 yards. Is this player good or bad? Good. We're not talking about good or bad. <laughs> We're talking about having it or not having it. Just, just and, a simple question. So, do you Jake, know who that player was? Jake, that, do you know Jake, who that player that was? Be, Hold on. Jake, that would be. Do you like, know who that if, was? If I said, "Okay, Jake, we're going to take you out every week and bring Eric in when we have a guest," okay. why? Because you're just not good. I, well, otherwise, if we thought you were good, we'd leave you on the show. But you're just not no. good, so we're going to throw you out. That's exactly what Kellen Moore's doing. to he Kelly? No, no, no trust in him. Bias. JB, I ask a simple question. Was that player good or bad? Yes or no? I don't know how many there. I don't know how many carries the backup got. I'm not looking it up. Were those numbers good? Yes or no? N- numbers are numbers. Yes, those Were, are good numbers. Do you know who that was? You're a politician. Doesn't matter. That was Marshawn Lynch. That was Marshawn Lynch. Matter. A guy who, who who was great, but in situations wasn't used right. So guess what? I guess he's not good because he didn't get used. I'm sorry. Right. That's not how it works. By the way, it, it does. It does how it works when you decline. Before Kellen your Moore game, came. Yeah. Zeke averaged 106 yards per game. Since Kellen Moore has been there, he's averaged 69 yards per game. I'm just saying. Well, why the change in the usage? Because Do less carries. Moore, it's all Kellen carries. Moore? Kel- yes. He makes the play calls. Okay. If, if you okay. average and why, 106 and why yards you choose that? in your first three years, if you average 106 yards per game and you maintain that for a career, you will be the greatest running back of all time. But he does not have an opportunity to maintain that level because he doesn't, why get doesn't the he have touches. an opportunity. Huh? If you were that good, if you were that good, why would it be? Because Kellen Moore's an idiot. So, uh, He's an I, idiot. It's like Greg Roman. Doesn't know how to use Lamar support. Jackson. So you're it's saying like, he enjoys losing. Obviously. It, Hold on. The clearly. Cowboys enjoy losing. Yes. That's a very yes. obvious statement. The Cowboys enjoy losing. The I can tell you that before this argument has, started. I mean, JB, you know the Cowboys enjoy losing. Why do they have the players that they do, and more importantly, the coaching staff that they do? Because and the they enjoy owner. losing. Yeah, really. I mean, come on. That was a silly question. That was stupid. They Do they wow. enjoy losing? Yes, that's why Mike McCarthy is their head coach, of course. Come on. Mike McCarthy's horrible. Kellen Moore's horrible. And, Zeke and John, John, what year did Kellen Moore start? Um, um, so this is his third year. So... So, so 20, 2021 and 2020, and okay. then this year. So, I mean, it's it's hard to judge it just because. So, what, what did he do two years ago? Not last year, the year before. 21. That was first or, year or 20. Kellen Moore. 20? Or what did he do? Yeah. I mean, Dak, a played, over a Dak, played, Dak played five games, but in those games, he had 222 passing attempts. So, 222 divided by five, quick math, that's. 44 attempts per game. And what did what did Zeke do? In the whole season, Zeke did, what are we talking about, 2020? He had 244 rush attempts for 979 yards. So my point in all of that was, so 244 divided by 15 games, 244 divided by 15, he was getting 16 carries a game. So exactly. the argument that can be made very easily is Dak was throwing the ball over 40 times a game and Zeke was running the ball 16 plays in the game. But Kellen Moore wanted to prove, wanted to flex his muscles. But if you take their first season together, which was 
2016, both players were rookies. Dak had 459 attempts in 16 games. So 459 divided by 16, that's 28 per game. That's only 28, not even 30. So he's he is significantly lower, while Zeke had 322 rush attempts in 50 games, which is 322 divided by 15, which is 21. The, the they made the thing, playoffs that year, by the way. They were very good. Yes, very they simply, were 13 and 3, I Very believe. simply. Very simply, the play calling has changed, and that's why. That was we the best year they've up, had in a long we, time. They we have to wrap things up. So, John, uh, I disagree. If he, John, if he thought he was that good, he'd be handing up the ball. End of I disagree. Blue You're Hulk wrong. 13, JB is out of order. JB, where can they find you? Make it quick. JB underscore the program. Zeke is not the same guy. I've said it here first. Yeah. All right, I'm muting him. I don't want to hear it anymore. All right, you guys can find me on Twitter at Jake underscore. Yeah, they play it no more, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't want to hear it. The Cowboys are going to lose the division probably because they stink. Giants are going to make the playoffs this year. You heard it here first. You guys can find us on all our social medias at Sideline Sport One or just look up Sideline Sports. We're on Instagram, TikToks, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And on that note, everybody have a good one, and we will see you next time.